Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now I got it. Right? Wait, I'm hearing me in my hair. You got to do it different on the Mac. Let me turn this one on. Oh, there it's over. We go. All right. <laughs> my computer was playing. Okay, now we're live, but don't say anything yet because I got to do my intro. But now we're, we're, we're ready. We're, we're finally here, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Okay, live from Houston, Texas is Ginger Crumbs Monday, and we're playing with a Macintosh beta software. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, now let me change the screen to Ginger. Oh boy, hi, hi everybody. At that, there you are. Well, how exciting was that? I mean, it's just a, we, I have no we're, idea. We're like a sunrise. It's something different every time we come up, right? Just woo! What if they think they'll ever get it down, right? Maybe. Well, you know, we're using beta software to talk to the beta software that YouTube is using. Everything's still under beta, forever. Well, we don't understand what that no, means. No, I don't either. John, just okay, but right. All right, so those of you who are stumbling on this channel, like, who are these nut bars and what are they doing? Um, what we're going to be doing tonight is acrylic painting. You, if, you, if you have not played with us before, I'm going to take you through a painting step by step. It's going to be an 8 by 10. And I sort of, I was really debating what to show you guys today. And I think, um, I, I was really happy with some of the things that we've done last week with the, you know, the heavenly bridge and some of those bright colored things. And I thought we'd do another bright picture tonight called Paradise Lost. And I'm going to show you how we're going to paint that. We're also going to do the big reveal. You know, if you got to watch our reality art uh, uh, show uh, last week with uh, on Sunday, episode six, you probably saw where uh, John was learning to paint. If you haven't caught that one, he's never painted before. I took him through a lesson on painting. It's very helpful. I've been told lots of comments on that. Anyway, we're going to sh we had to stop in the middle of it because we lost our feed. And I'm going to show you his finished painting, the big reveal. Ta la! Okay. So now here's what we're going to do next. We're going to, John, if you will aim our camera down to our, our uh, table. This is our painting right here. This is called Paradox Lost. It's an 8 by 10. While we're chatting away, the first thing we're going to do is that in this particular one, I didn't do it, but we're going to do it now because I have a lot of detail in the palm fronds and I want a little more paint on here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to paint the canvas sort of a light yellow. So I'm going to take a large brush. This is a ruby satin silver filbert and it's a, um, a a wide uh you know it's kind of curved and it's a number 12 these are really nice and i've sanded the canvas and i want you to listen to this hear it my canvas sounds like a drum oh that does really yeah and it sounds like a drum because i sprayed water on the back and tightened it up and that's what you want all right so when you get the canvas from the store if it doesn't sound like this probably won't no, when she first got that, it was not even a thump. Wouldn't make a noise. So that's what you want to do. You want that canvas nice and tight, okay? And uh, if it want, and hot water really works too. I just use cold, but when push cold comes, with a hair dryer. Well, yeah, cold with a hair dryer. But you know, but if you're, um, you can also use hot water too if you're feeling a little desperate. Now they sell <laughs> some stuff that 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 will do that. But why on earth could you buy it when water's free? You know. So anyway, all right. So I'm going to take uh, this filbert. I'm going to wet it. And uh, then I'm going to take a rag and I'm just going to uh, kind of make sure I have the water out of it so it's damp. And I'm going to start with the titanium white, all right? And I'm going to just grab a little bit of cad yellow medium, just like this. You can see it on the brush. And I want to just sort of mix on the canvas. I don't need anything too fancy. I'm going to just, uh, this is fairly thin. And we're just going to do a quick underpainting layer of this for the whole uh, canvas which will be very pretty with our sunset. When I first started doing this, I really wasn't sure what I was going to paint. So I'm starting with the white, tiny bit of the yellow like that, see? And then just mixing it on. I'm not bothering to mix it on the canvas. Um, doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure I have enough paint covering here where the uh, all the, the other parts kind of hidden. You know, so there. All right, so it doesn't really, if some of it's lighter than darker, who cares? Ah, who cares? All right, good. See, now you see me uh, smoothing this out. Um, sometimes when you're using a new brush, I haven't really had this happen with the, the, the silver line, the ruby satin silver line, but sometimes when you're using a new brush, here's just a thought, is that uh, you may find hairs coming out of your brush and on your thing, and then you sit there, you're picking them out and stuff. When you have a brand new brush, it's not a terrible idea to just run it under the sink. Get the sizing out, just like in your clothes. It has sizing in it. Get that starch out and then and, and kind of do this and then kind of you make around on your hand 
and then any kind of loose hairs that didn't, you know, kind of whatever, they'll come out. Now, I've never had to do that with these, but if you're not using that brand, that's just a, that, uh, on a light yellow canvas, a hair in there would really bother you, brush hair. I know it would. It would just be going, oh, look, I'm trying to get this off. Okay, so now what I want to do now, it's very quick. I'm going to dry that, but um, I can take a second. I, I think everybody's waiting for the big reveal for John, okay? So mm. I'm going to just, I could put the hair dryer on that, or I could just show you. Now, if you didn't catch the, the Raz show, we... Um, we, we showed John how to, uh, he's never painted before, never done acrylics, hasn't painted since watercolors 40 years ago. So I took him step by step, and we started off with some golden open acrylics. By the way, these are still wet. <laughs> still tacky. Still tacky. Still tacky. Even after you use a hair dryer on it. Uh, yeah, and it. they've been sitting here. It's still, still tacky. But then, I, then we went into our other acrylics, kind of go into what a golden open acrylic is and, you know, how, what applications for that. And then we went ahead after we'd kind of warmed up the brushes and we'd learned how to make some cylinders and so forth. Then we went ahead and shaded and everything. Then we went ahead and did a painting. And the painting that we did, this is the painting that I showed him. This is the lesson that we did. This uh, sunset. Now listen, you guys, there's a link on the RAS6. There's a link to this. Probably shouldn't put it on the wet canvas. Let me just move this out of the way. There's a link I to this. I wasn't going to say anything. Of course you were. You're just over there glad. <laughs> he can't help himself. All right. So... This, there's a link to this. This is a, um, a, a YouTube video we did a few months ago. So if you haven't, if you just knew to us and hadn't caught, this is a fun video. So anyway, we, so I actually have a step-by-step, -step, plus you're going to show me uh, teaching John to do it. So there should, you have to be really good at this painting. And all right, ready for the big reveal? Then we had to stop in the middle of it before we were finished. So here's John's final painting. How cool is that? Isn't that beautiful? There he is. There's John's signature. There's his boat and uh, there's his sunset and I'll just kind of put him here I think he did a marvelous job look at that it, didn't he absolutely marvelous and I like his boats and I like his sunset so um, wow you could almost uh, put them together like this and have a look at that you'd have one painting here couldn't you kind of look at that yeah, almost. It's, it's almost a well, regatta go with this one a regatta we could have a regatta <laughs> with very little <laughs> anyway there's John's painting I'm just uh, I'll leave it out there for you to see I thought that was pretty cool uh, let me move this out of the way. Now, I want to welcome everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, now is the time. If you're not a subscriber, then you'll be notified when we do these live things. And, Provided and you press a little alarm button. And it, sometimes it's late. I mean, some people around the world, they, you know, even though they have the alarm, it yeah. gets late. But Well, we're sorry about that. But, <laughs> but that's know, not our control. It's out of, out of our control. And let's see what else. Oh, yeah. You, so you want to do that. And um, like some likes and thumbs up are good things to do like these little thumbs up things likes um, and thumbs up oh they um Lori's asking back on the um uh, opens can you paint more layers on top of the tacky no i i was just fighting it grabs the brush it's terrible to even try it i'm not really sure what i'm going to do with those opens i'm got to play with them i'm a little saddened it's not what i was hoping well you know i like them for portraits and um you know you can um you, you, you know, at, yes, actually, you can paint on top of the tacky, John. You just but have to use more point. It's just, it's like painting wet and wet. It's like really, it's these work like oil. <laughs> so they tacked over a little bit. You can paint again. You can oh, keep painting. I but it's, well, I tried to do it on that. It just kept pulling the brush. Yeah, well, it drags. It's not easy. You have to have a lot more paint. It's, a, you know, it's, it's a trick. So um, anyway. And, and I, well, we'll play with it more. We'll, we'll play with it more, okay? So I want to um, I want to drag. Um, Good present for my here. favorite sister. What? My, my sister says it's a good present for her. <laughs> my first painting of acrylics? I don't think so, Nan. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's history, baby. That could be worth billions of dollars by the time Ginger's done with me. Yeah, what, well, this John's going to be on a painting journey. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna teach him to, to, uh, to really um, master, uh, the to art. master the art of acrylics, and you're going to watch the step. You can follow along as John learns acrylic painting. So... Right now, I'm not going to dry John's picture. It's already dry. <laughs> let's just, just have yeah, let's go ahead. Let's dry it here, again. Right? <laughs> so we're going to dry this one, right? All right. So, John, uh, I'm going to do that real quick. You want right. to turn me down? Yep. All right. Um, needless to say, it's Monday, and we were running around like crazy. I'm not even sure what I've got queued up to even show you guys today. Oh, I do have something, as a matter of fact. Let me show you this. We have got available for the first time ever some artwork, original artwork by Ginger Cook. 
These are available and are an option. They have been an option for up to three weeks. So go to our website, gingercooklive.gallery. Upper right hand corner, you'll see our gold seal of acrylic painting. Just click on that for right now. And that will take you to the page that tells you a little bit of how it's going to work and what has and what's available. This is our first 18 that we have available. We have um, 11 by 14, 8 by 10, and 6 by 8. And there's the one angel, which you call the one abstract, which is an 8 by 16. And uh, Ginger's back with us. And okay, she probably oh, wants you're to seeing some of that. All right, so yep. there's all different sizes on that. That's not just a, they're the, oh, uh, like you're, you're showing, you're showing you know, there's different sizes, and each one will have a certificate of authenticity and a personal note to whoever ends up buying them. And uh, we try to make them very affordable. You know, we're not charging a lot for these, but you know, if somebody really wants something, can bid it, bid it up if they want to do that too. So, right. but we're trying to make them there. All right, so this is dry, see that? You've got your handy triangle, right? Everybody's got their handy triangle. Really, if you don't have a see-through triangle, I'd really go get one, I promise you. And those are some things, people always say, what should I use my coupon at the art store for? I never see stuff like this, T-squares and triangles ever go on sale. That's what I'd use my coupon for, my 50% off whenever they have one. They never put those things on sale. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone somewhere with a coupon and then they've got this, uh, it doesn't count if the item's on sale. Have you ever had that happen? And they oh, don't even yeah. have it priced right and you get up to the register and say, oh, well, no, that... Oh, that that particular item, I'm sorry, that's not on that's sale. That's actually, we've, we put 2% off on that. That one doesn't count. Well, where was that? Where was the sign? Well, we didn't get all the signs up. It's been a busy week, that kind of thing, right? Sounds like right. us. Sounds like us. It's been a busy week. <laughs> that's, that's it. It's been a busy week. So, um, uh, it's uh, two inches down from the top. Ooh, we're actually measuring? Well, you know, we could do two fingers or two inches. I mean, you know... Um, it just it's not rocket science here you know if it's two and a quarter or something it's not going to matter just try to get it th this is kind of important to get it level so just take a little uh, this is a little uh, Conte um, pencil these are some brand new ones that came from uh, they're like a white charcoal pencil and uh, since you're not going to be able to see that which I know <laughs> we do I'm have other colors take, coming but they won't make that, it you know I can see it but for just for the purpose of the show I'm going to use a darker color right okay and boy that, that still showed through on my painting I learned on that too yeah, so then we're, 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 what we're going to do now is that we're going to start from the back to the front, which is how you do landscapes and acrylic. Start with the farthest thing away and come forward. I'm going to start with a... Um, I could have used that same brush. That actually would be fine. It's a little large for this piece, a little 8x10, but um, let me just rinse that, and I'll use that same brush. And uh, here, just wipe it off. So if you're going to rinse it, get all the water out of it, okay? Now, what we need to do, if you can see from this, all right, what we're going to do is that we're going to start, it's a gradated sky. In other words, it's sort of this gray, uh, uh, this sort of blue-gray color. A couple of ways to do that. And I'm going to, somebody asked me what you would do. Let's just talk about our palette for a minute. We've got titanium white and zinc or mixing white. Either one would work. Yellow oxide, cad yellow medium. This is cad light. You don't really need it. If you had it, it would be a nice color to have. You can't mix a cad light, but you can add white to a cad yellow and get sort of a light yellow, but you can't quite mix that one. Magenta, that's would be quadrochrome, magenta, dosmine purple, phthalo blue, green shade, ultramarine blue, red shade if you're using Liquitex, otherwise it's just pretty much the blue, and, you know, phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Cad red medium, burnt umber, and this is raw umber. Raw umber is a, as a translucent color and so what we're going to do is to take um probably at this point i'll take a palette knife you know what i give up what it's because you wanted me to move your picture in a picture over to the upper left i can't see your top three colors uh, well then move it back move it back it's okay we were moving the, the picture in a picture up over here because we thought because when the when we do this on because of the eye cards, those little eye card things get in the way, but it's all right. All right, so I'm going to start with white. All right, and most of the titanium white here, and then I'm going to start with a little ultramarine blue, like that. Now there's this color. Now see, that's pretty bright. All right, you see how bright that is? I want to gray that. Now I could add cad red medium, which would gray it slightly, or I can take a little bit. Let's just call this our unity colors. Take a little bit of um, 
a raw umber. Somebody asked how that might work. Here's a little bit of raw umber. And let's gray back that color. All right, now that, you see how that just softened that blue and kind of grayed it back? Now I still have a little on the back of the palette and I see them scraping kind of and squishing, right, like that. Now I've got this sort of gray blue. I'm going to put a little bit more ultramarine blue in there, make it a little bit stronger, okay? And I'm on a wax paper palette, and which I'll throw away when I'm done. Here we go. So I'm just sort of scraping this up here. And that's pretty good. I like, I like that. That's a soft gray blue. Now I, th I think I have enough, but um, we'll just see. All right, let's put this up here like that. Now I'll move this. Now what I'm going to do is just uh, come up here with the, with the paintbrush and come across here the top. Oh yeah, that's just perfect, isn't it? Yeah, here we go. I'm going to come across the top with that. And look, I'm still working it in on top of that yellow. Now I've got a tiny bit of water on the tip of my brush. Now I'm just going to move this paint just a little bit like that. Now as I come down toward the bottom of the horizon line, here's the trick. We're going to wipe our brush off, not rinse it, just wipe it off. And then I'm going to take titanium white and I'm going to overlap that. A little tiny bit of water on the brush so that kind of works. Here you go. Titanium white. Now look, we're overlapping this edge. See that? Like that. Overlapping it. Now it's going to be lighter down here at the bottom than at the top. And then I'll just wipe the brush and kind of very gently um, pull that sky in. So it's darker up the top. Now if I need it darker at the top still, I can take a little ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, raw umber, and use the brush to mix it if I wanted. Okay? And I don't have to use a palette knife. I can just use a brush. I can come back up here. Let's put a little bit more ultramarine blue in that. Come back up here and I can darken this um, little tiny bit of white with that. Alright, darken this um, top of this too. Just barely touch the top. If I wanted the top a little bit darker. Pinch that. See, just that and then barely touch it as you come down like that. And then leave it light there. So that's how we're going to do a gradated sky. Now the rest of this is pretty, this is pretty uh, straightforward. While that's drying, you don't have to do anything else to that sky. I'll take a little bit of chalk and I'll come up. I'm just going to do this at this point, about three fingers here, and put a, take some chalk right like that. Come over here and this is about three fingers here, okay, in about two. So I'm going to have sort of a, kind of a zigzag beach line. Let me take the green shot because you won't be able to see it otherwise. I was just going to say I couldn't see that. I bet you couldn't see it. And I'm looking, uh, here's some yellow. Maybe this will show up. No, <laughs> yellow on yellow. How funny is that? Didn't I have some green shot? Ah, here it is. All right, so see what I'm doing here like this? I'm taking this and kind of, see this sort of zigzag motion? I want to come here about, uh, oh, about two and a half fingers from the top and make a little peninsula out this way like that just something like that all right so that's that's where we're saying our shore is this is going to come down at an angle like this all right so there's our that's going to be our beach this is going to be our water so since we know that uh can we still use the same large brush and can and start putting some water in all right well we can do the same thing i'm going to leave this color here and i'm going to take a little phthalo blue and a little white and add to that now let's see, we're all out of white, so let's put some more out. I only put out enough white where you can kind of. We just it. had a few dozen people join us. Can you slip the um, what we're painting tonight down just for half a second? Yeah, let me do that. Let me just slip it down. Before in fact, you, you want to zoom out? We don't need this this tight for this. Yeah, we do. Here's what we well we don't. <laughs> no, but we do. Okay, so right. here's what we're painting tonight. This uh, this is called Paradise uh, Lost. Lost Paradise. Lost Paradise. Lost Paradise Lost. Well, you talk. That's not called Lost Paradise. It's Paradise Lost. That's actually a famous book. We can't, but then that's copyrighted. We can't do that. Yeah. We'll get in trouble. I think they're dead. Who? I think that was Hemingway. I don't know. Hemingway. Lost dead. Paradise is dead. Paradise Lost. It was that ancient. Wasn't that Ernest a a Hemingway? Didn't he write that Paradise Lost? Ernie? I, I, I haven't talked to Ernie in a while. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. <laughs> Sorry. So you can see where we've got this. Uh, here's a little bit of white here. And a do little you bit see of her our. Blurry? our um, a little bit of our... Um, no, I don't see her blurry. Who's blurry? <laughs> they say you're blurry. Why am I blurry? <laughs> I have, you're not blurry to me. 
All right, you're so as sharp you see, as a tack. I added a little bit of raw umber to that. Do you see that and how that changed that color? That's our mother color. Now we're going to come along here like this on the back of our horizon line, like that, which we put in there. See, like this. Oh, we can it's, go with it. Okay. He's dead and it's not a copyright. Paradise Lost. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so now, all right, so I've gone a little bit darker back here at the horizon line. Make sure this is straight, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add more white to that and a tiny bit of yellow and uh, phthalo blue, and we want a turquoise color. See that? See how we've got this sort of turquoise green color? Now, I'm going to come in here like this, add a little more white, all right? And then we're going to just, uh, more white as we come forward. Titanium white. Yeah, titanium white. You only use the mixing white for clouds and stuff like that. We have it there, but all right. Now the thing of it is, is that we've got this line back here. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. And I'm going to come back here with that little bit of darker blue color. And uh, just sort of phase, phase this out a little bit like that. So I'm barely touching it, phasing that out. Now that's basically um, kind of our water there. Now we need some more colors in that, but this will have to dry. This is what I would call, would tell you is our underpainting. And uh, let's see, a little bit of more of that darker blue color that we had right here with some white without the yellow in it, right here, okay? There we go. Now it's over the yellow, so it's interesting. So there's a little bit of a highlight. Now what you can do, now people don't appreciate this, but you could do this. I'm gonna show you a trick. This is a dry brush. We have a, a little angle brush and I just wet it and pinched it and wet it. So if you wanted to, to pick up some color underneath like this, you could literally erase some light spots in this. This is a little trick. See that? Look at, look at how I'm going back to my yellow background. And just rinse, wipe, swipe. If you want to do that. I don't know that I do. But that's, that's one of the things if you need some light highlights in something. You can erase them back. Alright. So our next thing. I think we're going to leave that brush. It's kind of big to do much more with. We'll come down to a, a bright brush. This is a ruby satin silver. It's a number 8. And we're going to just take some. Uh, yellow and magenta like that and um, I just want to come along in here like this yellow and magenta and we're just going to cover the beach. Well, we were totally wrong on, Law on Paradise Lost was written in 1667 by John Milton. Ah, well right. our day has not been wasted. People we're done for the night we have learned something new. Have Thanks learned something for joining new. us and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> We'll see you tomorrow. Our, that's right. All we, we have to do is learn one new thing, and we're done for the day. <laughs> that's right. That's right. One, one new thing. That's what we said. One new thing, right? Yep. And I and I thought that you. I, I really thought it was Ernie that did it too. He did something, but I can't. Okay. So here's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of magenta. Here's a little orange color. The beach can be different colors. Now you'll notice that when something's happening, get more. If you're making a few brush strokes, and 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 you're not getting any result, then uh, get more paint, all right? That's the trick, get more paint. Okay, so here's our beach color. It's going over that yellow. And it's because it's an underpainting, it's, um, it's, it's sticking pretty well, okay? All right, so there's, there, I'm already, look how there's a little bit of kind of light yellow around here like that, around the edge. Isn't that pretty? I don't know if we'll leave it, but you can see where the potential for this is. Now, this, our, this is still wet. I haven't used a hair dryer on it. But I can, for instance, come back to here, and I know I've got a mountain back here, so I'm just going to take a little raw umber, and let's, let, let's just draw it in real quick. I'm going to say that back here, I'm going to make it down to some sort of little mountain back here, and I'm just going to take a little raw umber and suggest it. All right. That it's very translucent, but we're just going to come in here like that and just suggest a little mountain back here. Just something a little interesting, so it's not quite just a rectangle. Okay, like that. Way in the distance, we're going to, you're not, it's going to get covered up by this palm tree, but we're just suggesting there might be a mountain right there. All right, that's easy, yeah? That was easy. I did that yesterday. Yeah, that was, that's pretty easy. One of those, and we're not putting one on this side. So that's all we've got to do with that. Now what we have to do next is dry all this, all right? So that is our next trick, is to dry some stuff. Can I answer any questions before I dry stuff? I could use Southern Ocean Blue, 
just bought some? Yes, if you had Southern Ocean Blue, I absolutely would use it. Absolutely. absolutely. Without a hesitation. Without a hesitation. And if you had some Thalo Green and Thalo Blue and White, you could make a Southern Ocean Blue. So some sort of turquoise blues, okay? That's nice. Could you bring out my picture one time, please? Sure. Let me some bring up John's people. picture. People wanted to see John's painting. Isn't that just great? And wouldn't that look great in this little setting she's making right now? Oh, just a little sailboat here. Wouldn't that be pretty? Yeah. Adding those two little boats to the picture might be very pretty, right? I know somebody asked about, they wanted to see me actually draw that. It was very, very simple to draw that particular item. Oh, the sailboats? Yeah, yeah we got cut off. We kind of crashed the yeah, system. Yeah, the, the sailboats, basically, if you think about it, all right? It was real simple. The, 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 here's a the, here's the straight up and down line like this. And then you've got a, it's a rectangle with this kind of a curve and it's flat on the bottom, okay? I call those triangles myself, but, you know, if you want to call it a rectangle, you go right <laughs> You're right, it's a, it's a triangle. But, you know, I, I'm not going to correct you on the triangle <laughs> versus a rectangle, I mean. You're right, it's, it's, it's half a. Half a no, rectangle. it's not. No, it's not half of a rectangle. That would be a square. <laughs> try and try. Okay, you don't understand the word try is three. <laughs> there you go. Three triangle. Oh. Three angles. I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> okay. Go back to your boat. Going back to the boat. <laughs> All right. So you got a boat here, right? So you got a boat. Here's our boat. Okay, so here's the bottom of the boat, right? And then there's a, got a, the, uh, that's a um, stern, that's right. I'm being very stern here, that's stern. <laughs> very stern with you. And then we're going to come up here to the bow. I bow to your expertise <laughs> on the oh, triangle. Oh, you are good. Oh, the little segues into this one, huh? All right, now I want you guys to understand something. In real life, in real life, okay, this boat does this, something like this. It has a keel. This is called a keel. And then what happens is you've got some water that's coming along here like this. So the bottom of the boat's pretty much flat except for the little wavy action, okay? And this is front part is a mast. I had a sailboat once. When you bake those things, they want lots of money for them, okay? Really lots, all right? And then there's a, this is called the main, that's the mainsail. This is the foresail, foresail, mainsail, foresail, jib, I don't know. Anyway, um, it's another little triangle because there, look, there's a little hard piece in here that, that, that there's ropes that tie these two, two things together and little rings and stuff that go up here. And then this, I think, is all done with the ropes here like this. Anyway, this is attached to that. There's just the, this is the, this is the mast right here. There's one mast and then you, this is attached to like that. So that's how you do a boat. That's pretty simple, right? Did it you was zoom really in simple. on that? Maybe. Me, please. Absolutely. See? I mean, I just wanted you to see that, okay? So there's your boat, okay? So remember, there's your water, and so just understand that this is how it has to, you know, that's your little sailboat. It was really, that was really simple. We have yeah. more complex things, I'm sure she has me drawing later yeah. in life. So, so anyway, so when you look at John's picture, now does that make sense? You know? Yeah. And you, you want to make sure to do those triangles and not <laughs> rectangles because you're going to have a very strange looking <laughs> sail. Though, in all fairness, I was just doing that giant galleon ship galleon whatever that spanish galleon or and remember their sails were this was yeah they, those were rectangles. they were rectangles so you could see how one could get confused <laughs> okay moving on moving on awesome painting john he did a great job we're going to dry this whatever this other one was for drying Where that right? do you have it still yes we're okay. going to dry it. i want to dry it and you can then explain to Maybe you'd like to enlighten them more about uh, triangles or, 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 or maybe <laughs> no, octagons no, no, or some no, other wait, wait. speech you'd like to make about shapes. D, D came squares. to your rescue. D came to your rescue. She goes, if you take a rectangle and cut it diagonally, you get two triangles. Well, that's what I thought, but then you messed me up. <laughs> like a piece of toast. Everybody knows that. Like toast. Like toast. That's right. Like toast. Thank you. I messed you up like toast? Like toast. Didn't you ever cut your toast like that? No. Your breakfast toast? No. Yes, you did in sandwiches? I didn't. My what? mother may have. I always did straight across. You probably just cut the crust off, too, didn't you? Oh, no, I like the crust. Okay. All right, <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> How we digress today. Oh, my. Uh, what else we got in our queue today? Queue today, queue today. Oh, we had a uh, entry come in from, not an entry, I'm sorry, a, a painting come in from Beth. This is the village scene. 
This is her final rendition of it. I'm not sure if we saw ones before that. Yes, sock folders unite. Come on, guys. So, this was uh, another one of our students. And that's one of the villages which did the stucco wall. Quite impressive. Can you turn me on? I want to talk about that picture again. Oh, let me turn you back on. Then I'll bring the picture back up. Yeah. All right. Now, you guys notice on the very bottom where the sidewalk is? Yes. And see, it's all... Uh, like like, like pebbly. pebbles. That's actually a, um, a a medium, a coarse a medium that's like got gravelly, and when you put it on, it looks like you've got gravel or sand, which is cool, right? You know, really really neat. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that. That's what that is, and she did a really good job on that. Okay, so now we're going to finish this. This is dry. See, it doesn't take long to dry these things if you're not using golden <laughs> opens, apparently. <laughs> But, so now we're going to take a, you know, a small brush like this. this, this okay, is a little can, can we get organized over there? The palette is, I have no idea where, what, what is, can you, your work area. You get confused a lot. I like a need to work area. Well, I'm trying to film this stuff. Oh, good. I can see that. Jeez, yes, oh good. Geez. All right. There. So, all right. Now, now we've got a little sunset back here. Okay. You. you see that? And back here, we've got a little, little sunset. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, we're just going to take a little water in that orange color we did, that little bit of orange color, a little bit of water, and we're just going to cross back over here like this, like that, like, oh, like that, maybe leave it, all right, now I'll take a little tiny bit of that transparent mixing white, okay, like this, wipe the brush off, a little more mixing white, there we go, maybe just come up here on the top, so I'm just going to suggest a little bit of a sunset, like that, doesn't have to be very strong. This can be pretty light, you know. It's kind of very fady. Here's it can have a little bit more orange down toward the the uh, water. Now, why this works, why this is so pretty, is because turquoise and orange are complements. So then I'm just going to take a little bit of the mixing white, come about to. I think I'm over here, just slightly off center here, and we're going to say that there's our there's our sun right here. Like that. I'll just create a little bit of mixing white for that. Like still wet. There you go. I'm not trying to get, and I might put a little tiny bit of yellow with it too. Let's do that. I think I was playing with this earlier today. There we go. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. All right. So there's our sun. Oh, here's the, here's the question we always get. Can you use half and half white and glazing medium to make mixing white? No. Everybody asks that, but you can't. You can't do that. I'm um, sorry. But titanium um, and zinc. And that's titanium. When you add a little titanium, that's how much it, that's what it, and I just got a little mixing white. Yeah, so um, there you go. So, the, and I didn't want anything that um, crazy. So that's with titanium. So I'm just going to come across here like this with a little of the orange and kind of fade that back out. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, like that. Like so just don't get too crazy with this. It's just, um, it's pretty. You can just extend this out a little bit like this. And, um, if we wanted to be the last of the big spenders, we could take a little bit of yellow and, and, type, and, and mixing white and come back behind here like this. This is kind of, this can be very effective in a sunset. That's a little bit more mixing white. So it's, that's not so uh, bright. Here we go. Okay. See like that. And we'll just, we'll just exaggerate the sunset just a little bit because we can. All right. And, um, now, let's see, I think oh, that's a little stronger than I want, so I'll just wipe a little off like that. There, okay, still still has that sort of haze, right? All right, so here we are, then a little bit maybe down here, as long as we're doing that, now we got to put a little down here at the bottom. There we go. All right, so now, what we, what we want to do now, let's see, if you zoom back out a little bit, I need to see both pictures here like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is start to put in our beach a little bit, all right? So, let's see, I've got, I'm just using a bright brush, but I think I'll switch back to my angle. I have an angle around here somewhere. Did I sink it? Yeah. All right. No, that's not, where's my angle? Huh. All right, here's another one. All right, here's an angle. This is a one half inch angle, ruby satin silver angle. I love the angle brushes for something like this. So let's take a little bit of the uh, mixing white or the zinc white, okay? When I come up like this, sort of zigzag very nicely 
uh, as opposed to unlicely, you know, so just a few little light. See how translucent this is across this down here from the sun, okay, like that, that's kind of doing that. Now what I want to do here, so I want you to see what we're going to do is we're going to follow some wave action. We're going to follow this wave action in a couple places, like kind of like swirl it like that, all right? And we're going to, so then we've got to, you know, have that. So let's take a, here's, the, here's what you want to do. You take a, like a brush like this, okay, and you know you're going to want some of this, you know, wavy stuff back here, right? So I'm going to just start here on my left and I'm going to bend it toward me, bend the brush toward me, and I'm going to start depositing some white like that, like that. So it's a little bit wider than I want. Now I'm going to take the phthalo blue without the, the, the um, and the little bit of yellow and white, titanium now, okay? I'm going to make a turquoisey color, or you could just use pure mixing white, no raw umber. And I want to come up here like this. This is a brighter blue. Do you see that? This is brighter than the one we grayed back. So that'll, and even if we add more white to that, it's still going to be brighter than the stuff that we did with the raw umber. So this will be like our color surprise. It'll be a bit brighter. Very pretty. Um, let's take a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and white. Make kind of a light blue color and mix it into there. Now we've changed blues again. Now here, here we go. Let's just put another little blue color in here like this. This is such a, this is a painting where you can do a lot of different blues in here just by, you know, adding some stuff and then, okay. so really doesn't take that much. I'm going to take a little bit more white. This is my titanium. Add to that. And I want to come under here like this and lighten this. Pinch the brush. Lighten this up this way in front of here like that. Okay. Now as long as I'm playing, I'm going to wipe the brush and get a little dazzling purple and add to that. Okay. And then I want to come around the edge of this sand which we've dried, okay, like this with a little bit of the sa sand color, a little dazzling purple into that, and I may take a hair, a hair of the raw umber with that, just a hair of raw umber. Raw umber is like salt, you know, you'll, you'll tone the colors back a little bit if you do that. Now here's our purple and the blue and the white with a tiny bit of raw umber in it. We're going to come along like this. This is, sand is usually dark where it's wet. Now if I take a little bit of magenta and purple and white, all by themselves, okay, okay, nobody's fooling with that. Now I'm going to come on top of that. Now look at the difference in the color. So look at that, keeping the brush kind of flat. See, I'm holding it kind of flat, keeping it that way. And I might even run off something like this. There might be a rivulet of paint, and I've got something a little purple down here like that. Joanne is asking, next time you do pinch the brush, what does that mean? And can you really show it under the camera and not in your lap? <laughs> yeah, I can. What a good idea. Yeah, absolutely can. Okay, I can do that. And then Here, we had here's one what I'm doing. I'm taking a brush like this and pinching it. I'm and putting my knife blade back. So I'm skinning it up and flattening it like that, pinching it. Okay? You'll see me do that all the time. I'm always pinching the brush. All right? Pinching the brush. I'm going to take this, this darker color here like this. And I'm going to come using this kind of... Um, darker blue color. I'm going to come under here and make a little shadow under that wave. All right, just a little bit bit of one, and I might just as long as I'm in, into a blues here. Let's just do one here. Let's do another little zigzaggy color, not too dark right here. Just make another little zigzaggy color doing this. Okay. All right. Do we have any more? Hmm. Well, we could. I think we're pretty good. All right little bit of a dark color right there, something like that. Okay, so all right, you see how everything's going this way. What it's not doing, this is real important. Let me show you what it's not doing. We, we get the <laughs> chalkboard out, all right? What it's not doing, here's your ocean. What it's not doing is this. But that's what we were taught in first grade. I know, but it's not doing that. And this, and your beach is not doing this either. So your beach literally has to zigzag like that in order if you're, it's going up the beach. Okay, here's another beach. Okay, so here's a it could can, can do like this, kind of this way. But what it can't do 
is it can't do okay <laughs> I, I get pictures back like this with people doing that, so I know I, I feel like I need to preempt that. Okay, we're just gonna. Don't you like that word preempt it? I do like that. I have a question from Adana. Um, Ginger, can you substitute burnt umber with Van Dyke brown? I don't like the transparency of burnt umber. Well, um, burnt umber isn't transparency. Burnt umber is your um, burnt umber is your wall, is your door, and raw umber is your transparent color. To, this says raw umber and that one's burn umber. Somebody asked us from a lesson last week to show them how to use burn umber as a, raw umber as a mother mother color. All right. Now this is burnt umber. All right, right here. Okay, and I'm put a little purple with it. All right, you with me? And I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to just say that there's a little rock here, a little rock ledge on this cliff here. There's a little I don't know some sort of little group of rocks right here, and that's burnt umber. It's not translucent. Okay, but you can, I don't know about Van Dyke Brown. What is that book I tell everybody to get that tells you the cross? You know, you know how lipsticks are different. You know, so it was a passion pink and and a romance uh, rose, and it's the same color. You know what I mean? Because you know there are certain colors. John's gonna look it up for you. There's certain colors and kind of in pink that are a bit like that. All right, so that's our little rock outcropping right there on the beach. Okay, so we got that. Now I'm gonna rinse the brush. Where did I put the angle brush? Oh yeah, it's right here. I'm going to rinse that too. This has had a chance to dry. Now, we haven't gone into the titanium yet. We've just done the um, we've just done the mixing white, but I'm going to, so we're going to go back into that and get it paint just on one side of the brush. All right. Now, where I have this line that I just did, I'm holding it almost vertically and then kind of pushing it toward me like that. And I'm dropping uh, just uh, so that there's the slightest bit of this shadow showing. And let me show you the difference. I'll take a little titanium and show you the difference between. Here's the some, some titanium white, and I'll do the same thing so you can see the difference. The titanium is going to be a much stronger white, which is okay too. All right, so we're saying this is sort of coming um, a around here like this. And um, we're going to say that this. This is our, our little island here, and then we've got another one right here, right on top of our purple. Okay, I'm going to do this again. See, I'm, see how I'm sort of leaning it over and dropping this edge, and I'm shaking the brush as I do it, so I'm getting this cool edge-looking edge. Paint just on one side of the brush. You've got this little glob, and you hold it vertically. I want to zoom in on this, John, so they can see what I'm talking about. See, and I'm dropping this like almost this little row of paint. See that? I'm dropping that paint. Now when I get here, I can't really do that anymore, but I can suggest the same thing by coming this way and just sort of suggesting that the water's doing this and it's coming around this peninsula. What brush are you like using that. right this now? This is that half inch angle. Do we set silver angle? Half inch. Okay, now the, I know that the brush guys, I mean, you know, probably have this size in. You can do a quarter inch too. That's, these are, you can, I like these because you can do so many different sizes with these. This is a, our titanium white, okay? Now I'll come back into the, um, you know, I don't want this much of a white edge, so I'll come back into the little bit of the green color and skinny that up a bit, say in a couple of places. I'll just skinny that up. There you go. So. Again, it's, it's even if it, you get it too wide, you can come back behind it and thin your white line up a little bit. See that? Isn't that kind of cool? That's oh, sort of cool. Okay, so you've got, there's our, um, our, our tide pool coming in. And then do I have any of this mixing white back out here? Do I want to take that, let's see, let's turn it like this and just suggest some, let's just zigzag some lighter white lines in here like that just a couple barely touch it just have it here like this it's just too wet maybe have to dry that a little bit okay so we're just going to suggest here's our sunset and then here i'm going to pinch the brush off maybe right along here i'll keep the brush flat and i'll just do something like that right here on the sand here it suggests that maybe some water just kind of snuck up on us when we weren't looking okay all righty. Now, now we had a question from Gail wanting to know if mixing white and tinting white were the same. I don't know. I have no idea because I've never used tinting white. I've never used tinting white because again, it's one of those things. There's semantics. Mixing white is half zinc white, half titanium. 
So you always zinc white is always a safe bet. So if you have zinc and titanium, which you should always have, make your own. Yeah, or you can just use zinc and just forget the mixing white altogether. It's just that not um, not everybody. For instance, Matisse doesn't sell either zinc or mixing white, so you're going to have to buy it from somebody else, right? I want to make sure I've got some. Here's a little titanium now. You can see how much lighter this is. Here, I just want it a little bit lighter next to my um, my cliff here. Hey, we'd like to take this moment to remind everybody to like and subscribe. We're trying to close in on 30,000 subscribers. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Oh, that's right. That's a good one. I like that. All right. So now let's do the same thing back here around our little island here like this, this little peninsula. Let's come back here like this and suggest there might be a, um, like some water coming around there. Now, if you got it real thick, don't panic. Just take your brush because you've dried it. Rinse it and just uh, erase the part that you need thinner. Okay. Liquid Texas, or I mean, zinc white is made by Liquid Tex and Liquitex Golden. Liquid Tex and uh, uh, no, zinc white it does not make zinc white is made by Golden. Liquid Tex makes a uh, mixing white. Okay. All right, and Liquid Tex makes mixing white and zinc white by Golden. I might just take <laughs> a little bit of, um, uh, but I think that um, Windsor Newton makes a, a mixing white, and I'm not not sure who else makes a a, a, a Golden. Besides gold and mix zinc, but the, but oil painters you know have all these whites. They have all these different whites, and acrylic artists just have a couple. Okay, so there we go. So there's our water. There's our um, our beach coming up. We're gonna, we're going to have some up. We need we need a little more color to our beach. So I'm going to rinse the brush and see. Remember we were into sort of this uh, sort of orange sand color. So we take we can take a little bit of um, uh, yellow and a tiny bit of cad red medium, and um, Let's take more yellow. Let's just use some of that cad yellow light and I'll show you. Okay, now we're going to come along here like this, holding the brush flat. and sort of just zigzag in some lighter orange here on here like that, just a little bit. And let's list what happens when you add a little mixing white to it. Just coming in here like that. In this little section here, we're going to suggest where our, uh, straight down where our sun is, we're going to just zigzag a little something for our sun right like that in the sand like that. Don't, this, this don't have to do anything too crazy. Don't have to make a circle or anything, just a little white spot where there might be sand. And then as long as I'm into that orange color, what could I do? Could I come back under here? This should be dry before you do it. Maybe a little bit of uh, zinc white with that. And just suggest a little bit of orange coming under here like this. Like that. And maybe the next one back too, just a little bit to show where the, the, the ocean is coming back. Let me just dry this real quick so that I can have a little more translucent color. Go. Okay? Yep, you're quiet. Go for it. Again, people, we are shooting for 30,000 as our next goal. I feel like a PBS uh, fundraiser drive. Go ahead and uh, subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like. Apparently four people didn't like us. If you don't like us, please change the channel. I never understood why people just can't change the channel if they don't like what they're watching. It makes sense to me. Move on. We're trying to teach the world to paint one paint in acrylics one brush at a time. And I'll turn her back up. You're All back right. in the Now, it's important to dry between these colors. Okay? Because any time that you mix a complement complementary color on top of another one, you're gonna, it's going to start to go brown on you, like orange and turquoise kind of make a brown. So if you want orange on top of a turquoise color, the turquoise has to be um, uh, dry. It has to be dry. Otherwise, it won't, it won't be bright and pretty. So here's a, here's a, let's take a little bit of cad yellow now and a little bit of uh, the magenta and make a brighter orange color. Okay, maybe some uh, zinc white with that. And let's just brighten up something here like that. Okay, like that, right around here, like this. Maybe a little bit of yellow and white. The little tiny bit of magenta in it. Let's see, that's titanium now. I'll show you if we can brighten this up just a hair. Like that, there, oh there, that's better. A little bit of titanium made a difference, didn't it? So we're just kind of suggesting a little bit of this beach color. Where could we put it? Could we put any of this in here like that? Just kind of wiggle it around on the sand. Keep the brush kind of flat. Okay, and then what about here? Let's take this beach out. Let's extend this beach out a little further. 
then we had it like this maybe cut into our rock a little bit like that these are the kinds of things you can cut you, you do when um, uh, let's see let's take a little bit of yellow and stick it next to there like that a little yellow and white here like that lighten that up we need to lighten any of this up around here where our Sun is like that yeah there you go and then just oh and how about up into here too like that okay so that's pretty good now what if we came back here just a little bit on our water back here and did that not we're not doing the whole water but just under the skyline here maybe back there it suggested there might be a little of that and I'll take a now sit down here my um, transparent white again now look what it does see see how it made that Sun look away in the background that cool how it did it and then maybe I'll put a little of that on the water too like this like that okay all right so we're, we're getting pretty we're in pretty good shape to do the uh, palm trees all right I'm, I feel like we are I could put probably I mean I've got this little white edged here and I could all right let's just play with this a minute let's just come up here like this and add some more white coming around our beach like that that's pretty and uh, maybe I want to come out like this and add a little bit more white back here I'll just this is titanium and I think I want a few little bits of white back in here like this like that I don't want to get it too busy if you get too much just you know where the blue paint is the blue green turquoise just take it off but I just want a little more color back in here than I had okay all right palm trees both sides now we get to talk about palm trees we talk about this on, I've done it talked about palm trees several times but but you may not have heard me, so we're going to pretend like none of you have ever heard any of this. Is that okay? That's we're perfect. Just, just, none of you have ever heard any of this. You just you were out of the room when it was said, right? So all right. So here's our um, here's our chalkboard. Now, palm trees are kind of, you know, if they're curving up like this, you know, if they 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 all they can be a little bit wider at the trunk. There's not, there's like hundreds of different kinds, but let's just this is kind of the ones that you see in most pictures. All right. Now what happens from here? Okay is that you, they have like spines like an umbrella all right think about an umbrella okay all right now what happens is they off the spine let's see I don't think that's going to show up I have to just use my chalk off the spine um, is where the fronds come all right off the spine uh, not out here like um, <laughs> like this like a comb like a comb okay really no okay it's got to go off the spine and you actually drag you do the spines first and then you drag the paint from there like like the spine on your back okay with ribs think about that okay now here like this this is all just coming down you won't probably see the other side and gravity's wanting to pull these down all right maybe this one's doing this like that coming up like that okay this one's coming up. Maybe you've got one that's coming in front. There's probably, you know, there's probably there's a bunch of them. We don't put as many when we're painting them as there are. But this is the general idea of how you paint a palm tree. All right. So if you just kind of keep that in mind, and you're not going to do this. Okay. All right. So, awesome. And then what you do is you don't draw them in. You've kind of put where the, where you're going to have them. All right. So I know that I'm going to come down here just below this um, this little rock, and I want it I want it to end right about there. So I'm going to put a dot and maybe a couple dots like that. That's the curve I want it. And make sure you're dry. And then over here, starting at this corner down here, and it's ending up. If I drew a line all the way up, it would un end kind of near the sun, about a finger's width from the sun. But it's going to stop about halfway in the water so I'll do a few dots where that one is the other ones next to it and slightly higher than my uh, my hill all right so the, if you don't like your dot then you can erase it it's a lot easier you know and then you can move a dot okay so just do a few dots to, so you know where everything goes and then you didn't think this painting was going to be that easy did you pretty easy mm -hmm. huh I yeah. thought I'd be here all night. I know you did. So, all right. So now this is where we're going to take the burnt um, umber, not the raw. 
using an angle brush I'm just going to come along here like this and go over the uh, dots and come up and then say this is where I'm stopping all right like that all right and here's this one going to come out this way that's stopping here and I get paint for each one and let's do this one I've got quite a curve on this one that's okay that's nice right I've got quite a curve on it maybe start down a little lower all right now what you do is turn it sideways and uh, take your brush and start pulling it towards you like this and this is how you're going to paint this tree in like this Jeff Pulled would like you. to know does Ginger ever use a fan brush for the palms or anything else does she have a fan, bu fan I brush? I don't have a fan brush you have they, no uh, use can, can I show you, show you something what I really think about fan brushes oh yeah, go ahead, tell us. All right, I want you to go to all the famous artists that are publishing right now, that anywhere in the world that are considered professional artists, and I want you to show me anybody that's used one. You know, since, um, you know, there's a certain group of people that use fan brushes, and they're okay, and they have their uses. They do. You can really get a good effect with those on, like, little grasses in the back and stuff like that, so they can be effective. But what most people do is they overuse them. So all brushes are good tools. But they get overused. I, my feeling is they get overused. And so, but you just you rarely see them used. All right. Now remember your trees are uh, a little bit narrower at the top and a little wider at the bottom. You just kind of kind of pull it this way. Uh, uh, um, palm trees are um, a little wider at the bottom. And I understand that, for instance, that there's a whole group of people that use these all the time, and that you just yeah, what I would do, what it say is you should be able to paint anything without one, without needing it, you know, and then if you want, just grab one because you're in a hurry, you know, what's that? Okay, there, all right, so there's that, those are those little pine trees. I think this could be a little wider here, and I'll catch that when I do the light on it, and I'll just do this one now. I want this a little wider here, and I'm going to put a little ultramarine blue with this brown, and the reason I'm doing that is because it's got to go over this dark hill behind us. And I want that to be this to be a darker color. So I'm just going to sort of pull this this way. All right, that's this palm tree like that. All right, now um, let me put my glasses on. I can kind of see something here. Okay, so that's this one. All right, now what you want to do now, if you're happy with these, what you do is you dry these. Okay. All right. So and this is uh, going to be a lot like the Ecuador lesson that we just did. Yeah, well, Ecuador, uh, yeah, Ecuador has, a, do we have Ecuador somewhere? I asked you, you said it was around here somewhere, which was the, our regular lesson. Every week on gingercooklive.gallery, we offer new, we offer new paintings and, and that are exclusive for our members. If you're a member, and, and not only do you get personal art coaching, but you get something really different each week and very in-depth and, and a little more challenging, all right? And last week we did something called Ecuador, which was originally done in the late 1860s or mid 1860s in Ecuador by this uh, artist, and I loved it. And it's as timely today as it was, um, was 1860, 1960, you know, it's over 100 years ago. Okay, I mean that's really impressive. John's going to bring it and show it to you. Okay, this Thank is you. impressive. Now this palm tree is done a little bit differently than the one I'm showing you. This one, not that different though. Do you see it? Let me back out. You know, I'm not that different. That's Ecuador. It's not that different. But the pro there's a lot of drawing and layers to that, okay? But that's the, the same general idea, all right, that we're going to be doing today. We're just doing a simplified version of that. And I'm going to dry these. Thanks for showing us that, John. I, I'll leave that up here, and I'll move this out of the way. That is so cool. So if you haven't done Ecuador yet, and you're a member of our, our gallery, Ginger Cook Live, you should do it if you want to do that. You can join for a week for um, just nine ninety five, and you can access to over two hundred and seventy five lessons. Okay, other news we have coming up on the website. We do have the form is semi running, F O R U M. The chat room is working. Um, we're still setting things up over there, but if you can't get access to things drop me a line and let me know you should contact us on our website um, because when you originally signed up a email went out that you had to confirm and if you don't confirm it you can't participate and a lot of those went to the junk mails where people didn't know what they were and ignored them 
So just let me know. We'll take care of that. Again, that's on gingercooklive.gallery, the form. Form, and we were going to suggest something to you. We had this, this sort of was inspired by uh, Sharon uh, uh, Poof, and I'm saying that right, right? Sharon yeah. Poof. And Sharon had become friends with an artist in Germany, and now they're painting buddies. And have you thought about getting a painting, like a pen pal, getting a painting buddy, someone that, uh, you know, we all share your artwork on Facebook and you share it with the, with me and so forth, but what about once one person, somebody else in the group? There's a lot of people on here tonight. You, you know, you know, put, you know, let people know you'd like a painting buddy and then you guys just, um, you know, kind of get a correspondence going back and forth and show each other your artwork and encourage you. We, 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 I, I thought this was a terrific idea. I think that's very inspirational, a painting buddy. So, um, so I'm going to throw that out there for you guys. I thought that was a good idea. All right, so you see I've dried this. Now I'm going to turn it uh, sideways, and we're going to take a little bit of, of uh, cad red medium and yellow. I'm going to make this little orange color, and we're going to do start uh, doing the same thing. We're going to pull it this way, and uh, I'm, then I'm going to highlight the palm. The light would be coming from the sun, so we're going to highlight that palm tree, just tapping it and pulling it like that with our angle brush like that. Do the same thing on this one. Can have a little bit more yellow, but that's okay. And you just sort of tap it down there and pull in a couple places. It doesn't. You want them a little raggedy, okay? Like that. See how, see how neat that looks. All right. Let's do the same thing on this one. Let's just bring it up here like this, and uh, just give it this this outside edge here, a little bit of a highlight. And then what I did was I pinched the brush and I went right into yellow. And I came up here just kind of like this, and just in a couple places with the bright yellow, touched it. And um, just, you don't need much, just a few dots of bright yellow, like that. Maybe here, particularly next to this rock here, that would be a good one, right, where, the, where that rock is. Now, now look what it did. Now, isn't that just cool? And now, if I want to do a little bit more to the palm tree, for instance, if I felt like I didn't quite have it um, as wide as I wanted, or a little bit, then you can come back and, you know, do a few little adjustments. But that's pretty good for your palm tree. Now, we're going to start with a dark green color. Now, here's how you use your color wheel. You, all color wheels have a little gray scale on them. And on one side, there's a dark side and a light side. Now, this, if you, this were a black and white photo, if this were a black and white photo, this sort of dark blue green palm fronds would be on the dark side of the grayscale. So, since that's the case, you're going to start with your darkest color first. All right. So, if yellow and blue is green, you're going to start with blue first. This is real important. Okay. So. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up mixing lots of paint, and once you get too much yellow, and then you can't get it dark enough, and then you wonder what happened, and nothing happened. You just didn't get it dark enough in the first place. Now, if you want to, you can come up like this, and you can draw in some palm fronds. If you want, to, if you want to, you know that you can kind of decide how you're going to have them. I always like a few that are crossing over the sky, some that are off the picture, maybe one that's crumbing around like that. Okay. Then I'll take I'll take some ultramarine blue, and a little tiny bit of yellow, a little ultra more ultramarine blue. All right, like that. Little tiny bit of yellow oxide, maybe that'll be that's a nice dark green. Let's take a tiny bit of phthalo blue too. Now it's a really dark. Mm, put a little bit of raw umber if you want. It can kind of gray that out. Now, start here with your angle brush. And just start with your palm frond like that. Just come up with the outside edges of these. I think I'll start on the top of this one. This is our first one. Like this. And this is where pinching the brush like this is very helpful. Then you've got a little water, tiny bit of water on your brush. You pinched it so that you've got this fine knife edge. And then you kind of lift the brush up like that so that you just the long end is tailing. The short, you're leading with the short end and the long end is tailing. Okay. All right. So we'll just keep going with this. Now here we go. A little bit of water on the brush. Kind of wake it up a little bit. Let's see. A little bit. Okay. I'm out of paint. That's what's happened. A little more paint. Okay. A little bit more color. All right. There you go. Nice dark paint. Pinch it. 
Here we go. I'm out of, I don't want to be out of paint. There we go. Here's our little tiny bit of water on the brush. Just using that edge, that last few hairs of the brush, okay? Same here like this. And you might want each frond you want to get new paint for. Okay, and here's this one coming down. You don't be afraid to cross over in front of your tree. There's a lot of different, if you looked it up, how many different kinds of palm trees there are in the world, there's a lot. This is a pretty common one that people put in paintings, this sort of tropical palm tree. And bring it across like that. And uh, then I want to come up this way and off the canvas with these ones. Yeah, you guys are hearing the dog barking. That's a dog next door somewhere. Been barking all day. <gasps> we thought we'd been robbed today. That was so scary. We had. But it um, didn't make any sense. We have a little solar, a solar thing for our pool for chlorination, or reducing your chlorination, and it was called Sally Solar. Of course, it has a name, and that, Sally was disappeared. She disappeared, and we went out there and looked. It's like this thing went to a different dimension. We were trying to think somebody would come into the backyard maybe and steal it. We couldn't imagine why you'd do it, but it looked like it sure felt like someone had done it. All right? So now I'm going to come up a little more thalo blow, so a little bit closer, and I'm going to come up to this one. And I'm going to say, here's my palm fronds. Now they can overlap. You can either have one behind or in front. You can decide which tree you want behind or front like this. Okay. Now these are going to be a little shorter, a little smaller tree. All right, now I want to bring some here like this. Maybe this is coming behind it. And now if you've got one that's a little bit behind it and you found it would be easier to paint this first one and then come back and paint the second tree, you could do that too. But there you go, this is behind it. And then we've got to bring one down here like this into our surf. All right, so there's our there's our first two palm fronds. See how cool this looks? And then we're going to come on up here with this one and do the same thing. And I, again, I suggest you just take some chalk and decide where you want the fronds. All right, you know, get get sort get get sort of a plan going here. This one I've moved over a bit. I may I may just I've got one coming this way. They come down like that. All right, so get a little bit of a plan going. And then start with your spines. Okay. Come up into the sky like that. And then here we go. Okay, like that. Let's just start starting with those. Now let's let's do this one. Some of the lower ones first. Uh Anyway, I thought that painting buddy thing was a good idea. I thought it was a good way to, you know, you're on here live chatting. We want this to be fun and happy. And I thought that uh, Sharon gets a lot of, uh, you know, that, that she, they share pa paintings back and forth. And they've formed a real friendship. It's a good way to meet more people. and um, Especially from a different part of the world. Yeah, different part of the world, you know what I mean? You know, get a painting buddy going. And um, so if you get to meet people. And, and, and also, when you're doing that, you, you know how you want to share with somebody what you're doing something? And you just, you can't, every time there's, you, you've got something, you really like someone to look at it. It's really too soon to send it to me, right? But you want someone to look at it, and your family's going to go, oh, why'd you do that? Or, you know, so you might get some snarky <laughs> comment from the family. Painting buddy, that's the answer. Find a painting buddy. I think that's such a good idea. You guys can be, you know, and we'll, we have that forum where you can share your artwork and stuff. I think that is so cool. Do you have to be a member to t share the artwork, John? No, not on, uh, not in the forum. On the forum, all you have to do is sign up for the forum, and you'll have access to the forum in the chat. Yeah, you, you don't can have live to be chat. a member. You don't have to be a member to do it. And in the forum, you can even create your own album. Put your own album together, all of your paintings, and you have a bunch of albums. It's oh, that'd cool. be cool. Cause that that'd be kind of cool. So all we'll in get one place. to do that in one area too. Uh, going back to poor Sally, what we did is uh, we have Sally is the solar solar gal that runs around on the top she floats around on the top and we have pete pete's the sweeper 
Pete Polaris, he's on the bottom of the pool, and we had him looking from the bottom for her when we couldn't find her. Still couldn't find her, so then we put Betty in. Betty's our sweeper on the top of the pool. She's a little robot thingy. And she goes around sweeping things up, and we went to dinner and and, and, and cried in our beer, as it were. We and then we come beer. home, and lo and behold, Betty had found Sally. We have no idea where she was. But we, we looked. It's a little pool. It's not, yeah, it's not that big of a pool. But... Betty's back, and they were all playing together. Uh, one big happy family again. Yeah, and I'm telling you what, because we really were, you know, talking about getting new locks for the back gate, and why would somebody come in and steal our little soul? I mean, yeah, I all the things that, to steal. Why would you take a little baby, you know, little solar thing? Well, we don't know, but it was gone, and we couldn't imagine where it would go, and you know, this was so weird. Can you back me out a little bit, please? I can. Watch me do that. All right. Now I want you guys to see our picture. How cool is that? Can you snug them together? Yeah, we can snug them down here together. Now we got a few little bit more things to do, but we're pretty close. Isn't that, I actually like this one a little better. I had a chance to work on a little more. And you know, you've got it kind of clean and nice in there. I mean, I think that that's really fun. You now, think we, it's you, awesome. You, you guys, one of the things you know me, I like it a little bit darker. See how it's a little bit darker down in here? I always like the corners a little darker. So we're going to take a little bit of the yellow yeah, I like you and magenta, that the first one. right like that, okay? Tiny bit of the raw umber to it, not not very much. Okay, this that's the secret. A little bit, use it like salt, and you know, there you go. So I'm just going to come in here and just sort of uh, darken that little tiny bit of raw umber, maybe just all by itself. Look there. I'm just going to darken the sand right in here. This now you're corner. using raw umber, right? Mm -hmm, just raw umber, and I had a little orange on the brush before, but I just wanted to darken the sand a little bit here in the corner, um, like that. I just thought that would be pretty. Just, I just, I just like to do that. You know what I'm saying? And then um, we've got, we've got all our purple. And this is very, very simple how we put this together. You know, there's not a lot of um, of brush strokes that you have to do to get this. You've got your kind of neat peninsula back here. Now, what you could do is take a little yellow oxide. I didn't do it in this one, but I'll show you. This is sunset, so this is an optional thing. But where it's near the, um, where your palm frond is near the, the sun. You could come up here with a little yellow oxide and just the part that might be facing the sun you could add a little bit of bright maybe just just kind of brighten it up a little bit right like that something like that wouldn't do it over here on this side but you know those are just kind of an overlapping thing you can do that's a, that's gonna be very pretty might do it on this one too just right here where it's you know right just where here. the sun would kind of be coming where the through the kind of sun might be coming through have a little bit of fun with that. There you go. Just a tiny bit. You don't have to get too crazy. Just sometimes there's some extra colors. And then right over here, uh, where this palm tree is, where we lightened it, I'm going to take a little more orange and put it by there. Because wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So make that show up a little bit more. Okay. So then what you're doing now, what you kind of do next is you go around and you... Um, See, is there anything else I want to do? Is there any, any colors I want to add here? Maybe a little yellow right here and lighten that up. Um, okay. That kind of thing. Is How about here on the palm frond uh, trunk? No, that's too green. Well, here's a, that's a very bright green. Let me just show you what would happen if you did that. This is tr very tropical. So if you added just something like that, too. Th there, you can just... Um, there you go, like that, and I'll put a little bit of dark over it so you don't lose it completely. There, all right, so that, just saying, you can brighten up something a little bit if you want to, to kind of or keep it all in the um, darker colors. There's a little purple. I don't want to lose all my fronds, and I think I just did, so I'm going to just do this, um, put a little purple over it. There, all right, there we go. All right, so... Um, Am I pretty good here? Do I want a little bit of a darker line under here like this? Just very subtle under here like that. Right under where the wave is. Right in the front here. So bring your eye in here like that. That's darker than I want. Now look, your eye's going right there because what's the rule? Your eye goes to the lightest light and the darkest dark. So I'll take some water then and just mostly erase it. But have this the tiniest little bit of dark line under there. Just barely see it. Barely see it. Just move that paint along here. Don't want to cross over the white. And just barely see that line. I've got a little ridge there. 
might make it a little darker and just bring some some paint out this way kind of sand gets a little darker all right sand has a tendency to get a little darker when it's wet so that's what the purple is okay like that that's what your purple is your darker purple right where your center of interest is which is this area in here where your sunset is all right that's something you can do that's you see that brightens the whole thing up when you do that because we didn't put any romber in it Okay, so there we're just going to kind of glaze over that and make it a little lighter, or rather darker. And you guys, that's our picture. What do you think, John? Ginger, I think once again you've uh, outdone yourself. Like it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And you, you know, that I think that was fairly, I think that was fairly easy to do, wasn't it? You saw oh, how yes. that was, so you know, you got through that and you could do it fairly easily. Part of me wants to put a little yellow right on this palm tree here in a couple places, like that. Pull it back up here, like that. There we go. There, just, I like a little of that highlight on those trees. I think that's really pretty. Just a couple of places, a few little dots. And yellow and purple are compliments. So you put a little yellow by purple, it always looks pretty good too. That's always a little trick. Yellow and purple are compliments. Turquoise and orange are compliments, which makes a picture like this pretty, pretty fun to do and, uh, and pretty easy as, as well. Okay, let's put a little bit of a light here coming around our... Uh, or you know where the where the tides coming in here all right like that and I would say you guys were done we should sign it whoopee huh John huh? do you think you could paint this yeah I bet I could yeah I think John could paint this I think this is a paintable thing I mean I, you know I took this and I really broke it down into the most simplest things we're doing the more important thing is to keep these lines I would tell you in review you want to keep this zigzagging like this all right and keep it all like that and very very subtle back here with your um with your son and back up here like this did you you know could you could you exaggerate the sun and the sand a bit straight down here like this i guess you could here's a little more mixing white that's what it does when you do that a little bit mixing white like that and you could you could exaggerate the sun in here like this i wouldn't make a complete circle but kind of a light area where um you know you're saying the sun is and it's exact. You can do, absolutely. You can exaggerate stuff like this, but I wouldn't. Again, I wouldn't get too carried away with it. Oh, That's, what's this? Uh, what's this week's release? Oh yeah, this week's release for the Ginger Cook Live Doc Gallery. I wanted to show you guys some of that. Um, first off, I want to say that if you did the, uh, if you last week on, on on YouTube, if you did our Heavenly Bridge, I think these go. Don't you think this is a Paradise Lost? This is sort of Heavenly Paradise. Don't you think so? I mean. Are these the colors you see the color schemes are nicely they all go together yeah okay I mean they really do I mean if we got some nice color schemes in here and I wanted to mention that if you haven't had a chance to do that that one this was really a fun YouTube lesson to do and then um, John do you have the coffee one the ode to coffee yeah. that, that's something up and the reason I mentioned that is that a couple of weeks ago a few weeks ago we released a rather difficult on gingercooklive.gallery we do lessons from the most very beginner to the most advanced, all right? And, you know, the box of cookies to the one and two cookies. And the Ode to Coffee was one of our more difficult, challenging lessons for people who have been painting a little bit longer. And we like to, you know, we came to you guys too. But we know that, listen, I know Starbucks are springing up everywhere. I know you guys, there's a lot of coffee drinkers out there. And I mean, I've been drinking coffee since I was 12, all right? So I wanted to show, I wanted, oh, not this one, I wanted the actual Ode to Coffee, you know, the one with the coffee grinder. All right, so um, I wanted to show you this. This is the new release we're doing for um, this week uh, for uh, our members, Gallery. This is our new release, and you've got, the cof you've got the coffee cup here. You've got your books and some reading glasses, okay? So which I thought kind of summed up... Um, what we're about sometimes, kind of who we are, and I, this is a this is a two cookie lesson. This is pretty simple to do, and I think that that's kind of it. It's a really kind of neat one, and uh, um, so, uh, so low down on the wall there on the left, right there on the on the side wall, and then if you wanted to, you could do it. We just kind of did this in the computer. You could do it all monochromatically. If you wanted to keep it all in the neutrals, you could do it that way too. So you can either do it kind of bright and you know with the reds or you can tone it down for your kitchen Whatever you thought would be fun to do on that so um, John's still looking for the I wanted you guys to see if you didn't know what we were talking about ode to coffee um, He's just not seeing the, the 
Well, we hung up all the paintings. I don't know how we could have lost it. Oh, okay. I said, I no, we, we hung up all the paintings. We have, they, they go all down the walls. One of the reasons we're, you know, we're selling stuff. All right, so now here's Ode to Coffee, which is one, which is one of our more um, uh, challenging lessons, okay? And for our gingercooklive.gallery. But I thought that this, if you'd done this one, this would still be a nice companion piece, and you could do it in the same colors. You wouldn't have to do it in these colors. But, you know, a lot of different ways to paint things. So I wanted to show you guys that. And again, um, if you had fun with this uh, water uh, painting tonight, thank you very much, John, for showing us that. Appreciate that. Where did I put with this? Where's, where's, where's the one we just did? <laughs> oh, I saw I left the room, so I couldn't tell you. All right. So, all right. I left the room. was there. All right. So this is our painting for tonight. We'll go ahead and sign that. This is our, that, there we are with our uh, Paradise Lost. And if you guys like water paintings, all right, um, Consider joining our Wave and Water Masterclass. We start off with very simple paintings and we get much more complicated. Um, here's, our, uh, here's one that I really like with the ocean and the wave and the rocks, okay? See similar colors and all that stuff. And you already know how to do this back hill now. You know how to do some of this. You'd be surprised. You might find you really enjoy that. Incidentally, this is on a, a one and a half inch wide gallery wrap canvas. Normally you would paint all the way around the outside of this. All right, somebody asked about, and you don't frame these. Somebody asked me about that the other day. And you don't put acrylics behind glass. That was one of the questions we got. You don't put acrylics behind glass unless, unless they're on paper, and then you could. Um, normally, you just varnish, okay? That's and, good to any know. Any other questions? How about uh, the, 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 our, our, our galleon? Should we show that before we sign off? Or <laughs> our big, big painting from Wave and Water for this month? Before we sign off, we're going to show you this or show you our last stuff to sort of show and tell. But every, like I say, every week our regular members get a new painting. Like for instance, Ode to Coffee was one week. The um, the um, but once a month, our um, our Wave and Water class members get. Uh, he's going to back up for that. They get um, a you know a new piece of art and and to to paint. And this is um, Heartbreak at Sea. John named this Heartbreak at Sea. And I thought you guys would like that. And if, uh, you know, like I say, this is 16 by 20, but not all are wave and water of classes. Some of the paintings are much smaller. And of course, you don't have to do it that big. You can still learn to paint water. So anyway, we threw the ship in the, there. We had some asking for ships. So again, we, and we thought we'd sink the ship right off the bat. What the heck? What the heck, right? And, and for someone that wants to take cruises, it's probably a <laughs> bad thing to paint. But anyway, I did. I did it for you guys, right? The tractor's coming. I don't know when, Sue, but eventually. I the barn, the tractor, and the chickens. The, the barn. That, oh, do we have to do chickens, too? Just a chickens? few. It's chickens? all in my head. I just got to sketch it out for you. You'll be, you'll be, it'll be golden. Oh. You'll be great with it. I know you oh. can do it. All right. So now that you've done that, you see how this was this week's lesson, Ginger Cook Live. See how the palm trees, a little bit more in detail, but they're not that hard. Now you're not so scared about it, are you? It's going to be not that hard to do. You're all set doing this. So we thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Be sure to subscribe. Do you want to if answer a few, a couple questions? Yeah, let's answer some questions. And I want to mention any comments you make disappear after you leave. So, um, <laughs> make if you'd now. like to come back and you know, write some lovely comments, we love to and I'll, we and share it. and put us in your playlist. Yeah, playlist. That's good. That helps. Uh, that helps the YouTube search engine. Um, Rose is asking, can you use acrylic if it's been frozen? No, if acrylics have been frozen. Well, Golden says you can froze your acrylics up to about 10 times in their finer fiber, whatever the deal is. Most acrylics can't be frozen. Raw umber is one that really just tanks. And, um, and so if you can tell it's been frozen because it comes out all chunky. And yeah. then you can't paint with it. Pretty much is uh, It's yucky. It's yucky. You can't really paint with it. Um, Gail's asking, so you just... Put, when you're done with your painting and you varnish it, you just frame it varnished, no glass, no protection over it, just no, the No, no, because the, here's what the varnish does. What your varnish does is a, um, and this is really important. If you guys, I, we have a lot of grandparents out here. I'm a grandparent. Some of you guys are too. And one of the things that happens is when the, when the word gets out, your artist, then all the comic books, come, the, the Cinderella's and all that start coming out. And they want you to trace it on some furniture and some stuff and paint for them. Haven't you been asked to do that? And you all paint well enough to do that, right? But now here's the deal. If you're going to paint on furniture, it doesn't, it's the same idea. Why you want a varnish? Do I have a varnish sitting here? Mm, uh, I don't think so. I, but why you want a varnish is 
that because it molecularly binds. It seals the whole and it deal. It seals the whole painting. And you want two coats of varnish. I have a video on varnish on YouTube tells you exactly how to do it. You don't do it the way the manufacturer says. You'll have a horrible glare, which is why nobody wants to do it. But if you do it the way I show you, you don't get the glare. And now that's sealed. And two coats of varnish really seals the painting now because it's bonded to the painting. It, it's not like oil painting varnish, which can come off. Okay? It does, it's, it's there. And your painting is sealed. It goes all the way down to the layers and protects it. And if you're doing kids' furniture, like I used to, just some darling furniture for my grandkids, at one time, um, it's kind of all gotten waylaid and moves, but that um, you do about four or five coats, and then I hit it with some shellac after that, you know, or some sort of you know some sort of uh, you know stuff from the hardware store to really seal it, protect it, because kids are kind of hard on things. But for sure, four or five coats of varnish if you're doing a chair or um, um, you know table or something like that for some kids, you know, because they're going to ask you. The word's going to be out. This would be too hard, would it, Mom or Grandma? Couldn't you just make this for us? <laughs> yeah. Real Haven't quick. you been asked to do that? And then, then maybe you just want to. There's a new baby coming along, and you you want to make some new stuff. You know, that's fun, and you don't have to just paint on canvas. That's true. Hey, when are we going to do some more um, sunflowers? Alicia would like to know. Sunflowers? Well, I don't know. That's the you're the first person that's asked that. We haven't. Uh, it hasn't been this deluge like the barns and the chickens, <laughs> you know, but the sunflowers. Barns we do chickens. have a Van Gogh sunflower on our, uh, a vase of Van Gogh sunflowers well, on I've our done website. That one. I want more. I want more sunflowers. And then um, we have the sunflowers on YouTube, that nice big sunflower thing. So, you know, we may do some more. We know the sunflowers are nice. When is the next art lesson for John? Well, you know, the RAS lessons, the RAS, which is Reality Art Studio, our RAS lessons happen when we have time. So we're going to So try they're never to, scheduled. We, we never schedule those. We schedule Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Tomorrow night, we're going to be doing the... Do we have that picture real quick? What we're going to do? I just keep him going up and down. He's jumping up and down. Tomorrow night, on Tuesday night, we're going to be painting, but by popular request, we're going to be painting this uh, spring scene of the... I'll do with that it's on the wall. Remember, of things to. It? Yes, it's on the wall under things to do. We have a whole wall schedule of things. To, of things we're painting. Do your. See it? Can't miss it. We're doing a couple on the bridge. Uh, not the wedding one, but the other one. No, yeah, no. yeah. Well, show you can show you know. The eight by eight. Yeah, the eight by yeah the eight by eight. This little square one. Oh, eight by eight. This was cute. We thought we'd do piece. this. We're going to be doing this tomorrow night. We're going to show you how to do this. This is what we're going to be doing tomorrow night. If you haven't done this, we thought you we thought it would go with all our spring colors and um, and so forth. So we're, we're going to be doing that tomorrow night. And this is, I hope you enjoyed the lesson tonight. Any last questions before we say goodnight? Yeah, what channel are we going to be on tomorrow? I, we honestly, know. we're not sure. We're going to use the Mac again because we had zero problems transmitting. So we're not sure. We're going to try to do the one that's listed on the website, but... If you go there, we will post where we ended up like we did tonight. Yeah, we're just... Are we know, getting something Irish? Miss. No, you're not getting anything Irish. John, I wish you oh, could yeah, give us at least St. a few Patrick's minutes day, before it? Raz goes. I have no way to tell you when it's going to go live on Raz. No. I mean, we could post it to Facebook. We don't do Twitter or anything. I mean, Gail and everybody, if you want to know when we're going to do a Raz... you got to just pretty much... you got to go there. Um, you got to subscribe. And or maybe if we get you to go to the website, but how, you know, how are we going to get the word to you? I don't know. We don't know, because sometimes we decide like 10 minutes before we do it. Possibly. Now, this, I know this works. If you join the form, and I post it in the calendar that we're going to do it in like a half hour or something, that sends out an email immediately, because I get them every time I do something in the form. Oh, well, that's, yeah, join So that's form. the way to do it, is join the form, and then I will try to get in the habit of doing that before we, as I'm setting up. And that's on gingercooklive.gallery. You do not have to be a member to be to but join the form. But you do have form. to sign up for the form. It's but under you the have join to us. sign up. Yeah. Okay. John, if we wear folded socks, will we be able to paint better? Absolutely. There is no doubt in my mind the socks folders will be better painters. <laughs> and if you fold your underwear, but listen, he doesn't I'm telling know you, you get triangles when you cut when you cut bread. What can we say? <laughs> he doesn't even know that. I mean, listen. What does that tell you, folding socks? Really? All right. It's better than Braille underwear. Say good night. Say good night, John. Don't good talk night, about John. underwear. Just say good night. <laughs>
Good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow night somewhere in YouTubeville. That's the best we can do. Bye. Bye, all. Good night.